of Grails 3, the first uh, things that come to mind uh, when you uh, when you look at the config uh, at the documentation is the big feature is Spring Boot and uh, whatnot in Grails 3. But actually, um, in the documentation of Grace 3, there is a tiny chapter on the event system. But in my eyes, the event system in Grace 3 is, a, is an absolute gem for building applications that are able to um, work asynchronously. But in addition uh, to that, also mo in a more decoupled manner. And why this is the case? is something we're going to elaborate uh, in the next uh, 40 to 50 minutes. Um, we'll uh, have the talk in two parts. The first part, I uh, will introduce you to the, uh, to the idea behind the event system, why the event system is a good idea from a software architecture, software design point of view, and uh, we'll take a look at the APIs, the annotations, of what the event system is based on. It's going to be based on the Spring Reactor project. And uh, we'll close that off with uh, a short uh, live coding demo where I will um, refactor an application to the event system in order to show you how the decoupling really works, what the benefits are. And you can uh, download this project also uh, from GitHub. I'll have the uh, link to the repository on my last slide. Um, Due to the introduction, uh, we can keep that short. My name is Michael. Nice to meet you, everybody. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is BitBoss, and I will also uh, post the slides and uh, the link to the code after the talk on Twitter so you can uh, download that. So basically, I have this hype word, reactive, uh, in my title. And um, let's take a quick look what reactive actually means. Um, there is this reactive mano manifesto out there. I think a couple of you have already stumbled over that one, have read it, have thought, well, that's a nice idea. There is other frameworks that um, are uh, really intensively picking up this idea. For instance, Playworld, but we're at the Grace conference, so uh, uh, we'll not talk about Play here. We'll talk about Grails. And this is also a very big topic if you take a look at the ecosystem in, in Grails. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I've been to the Spring I.O. in Barcelona, and they had a keynote. And one of the, the key big, big features in Spring Framework 5 uh, is going to be reactive programming based on Reactor, which is also uh, the basis of the uh, event system in Grails 3. Reactive means that web applications should be responsive. That means they should answer fast. If you take a look at the e-commerce world, for instance, uh, there is organizations, and a lot of organizations do that, that measure how much uh, performance drawbacks cost them in terms of conversion rates of customers. So the faster an e-commerce application is, the more conversations, the higher their conversation rate is. That's a general rule of thumb. These applications should also be resilient. Um, resilient means they, should, they shouldn't fail when some backend service fails. So for instance, um, we're going to talk about a, um, a content management system throughout this talk and also in the de demo. The content management system that we are going to see is totally dumb. It's not a CMS talk we're talking about here. But for instance, I want to post an article on our website. And in this case, I also want uh, the article to be posted to Twitter, to Facebook, to Google+, uh, for instance, added to some RSS feed or whatever. So let's imagine Twitter is not working and we wouldn't have a resilient application. We wouldn't be able to post the article on Twitter because the complete call would fail. That's no grass, uh, graceful degradation of service. A graceful degradation of service, uh, which Resilient is actually about, is, well, we can post the article, but the link isn't on Twitter. Well, will cost us a couple of hits, but the core of the business, posting the article, publishing the article, would still work. The next thing is Elastic. Elastic means um, that these applications are easy to scale out. If there are spikes in requests, 
we can easily scale this out uh, and distribute the application. And finally, there is message driven. I think message driven is, uh, uh, messaging is a rather old topic in the IT and in terms of software architecture. But um, I would um, see message driven, well, message driven is a perfect case, but message driven also implies Tenden, uh, tendentially uh, some sort of infrastructure being involved. Let's uh, take a look at asynchronous here. So we don't want to have synchronous call stacks, we want to work heavily asynchronous, preferably over a messaging infrastructure. Um, talking about asynchronous, Grails 2 already had a ton of features in terms of asynchronous programming. We have support for promises. We have support for asynchronous GORM in Grails 2. Uh, we have async request handling, and we have serverless 3.0 async features already being supported in Grails 2. And now the, the question might arise, why do we need another async kind of thing in Grails 3 now? Just for having the label reactive? No. Um, a good idea is actually that we want to create loosely coupled applications. Applications that have a loose coupling between their components and that have a high co cohesion in terms of uh, business value. So in terms of cohesion on the, uh, on the CMS application, we might see that the core business value of a CMS application is to write to edit and to publish articles. And we can say that, for instance, linking an article on Twitter, on Facebook, or Google+, we can say that's marketing. That's not the core business. Let's take a look at a, um, um, an exemplified call stack that we might have. So when we want, we have an article controller in Grails. Grails create controller, article, or create domain class article, generate all, whatnot, and there's the save method. And in the save method, first of all, we want to save the article in GORM. After that, we publish the article on Twitter, we publish it on Facebook, and we notify the boss uh, via mail, hey boss, there's a new article for you to review. How would we have usually done that in the Grails to world? Usually, I think most of us would have put the logic into services and have called the services, be it synchronously via service dot uh, publish article on Twitter or asynchronously using promises or something like that. But the problem with that is that even if we use promises, for instance, for the async processing, we have to put the code, the service call, into the, let's say, safe article service or the article controller. So adding a new social network, for instance, we now wanna go ahead and post a picture with a link to the article on Instagram. Means we have to take the code for, um, uh, in the article controller in our hands and put the code in there. So it wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to write a, um, let's say, a Grails plugin, uh, Instagram publisher, and the Grails plugin would um, suddenly um, do the publishing. We would have to add the, pu the plugin and then have a reference on the service in our uh, initial core business code base. So this is, in some ways, a, well, pretty tight coupling. So even by using promises, we have a tight coupling in our components, between our components, between the plugins, between services, between controllers, and so on. And let's be honest, we start off with a small CMS, we say, ha, we are agile, we start with a minimum viable product, go on the market, have a killer app out there, and well, the minimum viable product is going to grow. It's going to grow, and sooner or later it's going to look like that. Because we have a, a mess of dependencies. We have a core web application, be the greatest application or something other, um, that is highly dependent on other components. 
And one solution um, is working with events. And that's a really interesting uh, alternative here because um, we could refactor the code and say in the article controller, we only save the article to the database with Gorm, for instance. That is the core business of the article controller. And after that, the article controller publishes an event, article created or article published event. And we have some handlers or listeners or consumers, however you want to call them, that are listening on the event and that are then uh, posting the article on Twitter, on Facebook, and we notify the boss via mail. The nice thing here with this, uh, this approach is we do not directly couple the article controller to the services for Twitter, Facebook, and uh, the email service anymore. We have them loosely coupled. So adding Instagram, for instance, just means writing a new handler on the event, registering on the uh, article published event, or article created event, and that's it. We don't have to change the code of the article controller anymore, which is a very nice and loose coupling. And yes, of course, we are not running in the same transaction there anymore. But what is actually the, the real transaction of an article saved? That means saving the article to the database. In my eyes, potis, posting it on Twitter, Facebook, and so on is add-on functionality that can fairly run outside uh, the transaction. And if this fails, we can have a, a, an error stack, an error queue, or something like that. How would we usually solve this kind of problem? We can solve this problem with the event in uh, Grace 2 already. We could add a messaging infrastructure, um, such as Rabbit, uh, ActiveMQ, uh, or even a good old MQ series, publish an event through the messaging infrastructure, and having some, well, uh, messaging-based spring beans listening uh, to these events and, and doing this. But I would say this is a good approach for big, complex applications. For, let's say, um, normal, smaller, medium-sized Grails applications. That might be a little bit of an overkill. Uh, it might be a little bit too much. Adding an added infrastructure, it adds complexity. So there is now a new uh, project, which is called Reactor. And this is the basis of the Grails 3 event system. Le let me go back to this slide um, for a second. Um, there is a new feature now in Grails 3, which is uh, the event system. And the event system in Grails 3 allows us to do this inside a JVM, inside and running Grails application, without adding an external infrastructure, such as a messaging system or something else. And this new feature called the Grails event system is based on the project Reactor. Reactor is a foundational framework for asynchronous applications on the JVM. Um, it's basically um, uh, an abstraction for Java, Groovy, and other JVM languages. And it aims to make um, writing event and data-driven uh, applications even easier. Um, and it's very high performant. And it's also uh, now um, most of the guys uh, working on Reactor or uh, working at Pivotal, as far as I know. And Reactor is also a very strategic project for the Spring ecosystem. Uh, so also the, uh, the reactive part um, in Spring Framework 5 is going to be based on Reactor. Basically, the two Reactor team leads um, had a keynote at the Spring I.O. in Barcelona a couple of weeks ago introducing the reactive uh, features in Spring Framework 5. So I think gra uh, the Grails marketing slogan, uh, Grails is based on the shoulders of giants, uh, where they always said Hibernate and Spring and whatnot, is still true because Reactor really is a very established, very stable, and also a very strategic uh, framework in this, uh, in this area. Um, you can check it out on, on GitHub, but uh, when you take a look at the code examples, um, you will see that Reactor is um, a 
truly a foundational framework. So it's, well, not so easy to grok. It's uh, very complex, but very powerful. But basically, a reactor runs down to three bil uh, building blocks that are selectors, consumers, and events. An event is the easiest building block to understand. So an event is article published, article created, um, consumer or customer verified, and so on. That's something that has a certain payload. Uh, we can transport data in events. So for instance, we could publish our article as an event payload through uh, Grails or the reactor event system. So we can transfer data uh, through events. That's an event. A consumer is a class or a component that is able to consume events. Um, so it can take an event take the payload of the event and do something with the payload. Well, it can toss the payload away and just have a printl <laughs> event received in its code. And the selector is um, giving a stream of events. Um, basically, applications that are event-based fire off a plethora of events, many events, many different events. Article saved, uh, customer verified event, uh, shipment delivered event, and so on. And a selector is able to describe which event I want to handle inside a consumer. And just a little um, um, hint for working with events. Um, it would be very tempting for us to have events um, in a language of, um, well, create, update, delete, C-U-D events. So article created, article updated, article deleted. Customer created, customer updated, customer deleted. Shipment created, shipment updated, shipment deleted. Don't do that. Think of events in a kind of a different fashion in my eyes. That's better. Think of real business events. For instance, with the shipment, uh, why don't we have a shipment dispatched um, shipment delivered, shipment lost event. Because these are events that we can discuss with our business customers. They understand what shipment lost means. I think everybody in this room understands what shipment lost means. Uh, shipment delivered is also very understandable. We're in for instance, uh, how would we model um, shipment updated, uh, shipment lost, shipment delivered, in a, let's say, classic way. Uh, it would be shipment updated, but yeah, you have to set the status to deleted, the status deleted, uh, shipment updated to status lost, for instance. And that's very, I would say, awkward. And um, also, another thing on the um, creation of events, go ahead and um, Formulate your events in past tense. An event is something that has happened in the past. So when the article controller has saved the article, the article has been published, for instance. So we don't have a, let's say, a complex content management system as soon as we save an article. It's online. So basically, it's not article saved. We have published the article. And published means that the uh, article.save plus true in GORM has been successfully delivered against the database. So it's something that has happened in the past. Um, and this is also, if you, if you start off with uh, modeling your events like that, um, you have a very, very easy migration step towards, for instance, event sourced applications, where you're not going ahead and save the article, where you build your persistence upon events. Um, we're not doing a talk on event sourcing here, but just a glimpse. If you, if you take good care how you model your events, you have a very interesting migration part, path towards a CQRS event sourcing uh, kind of world in your Grails applications. So talking about Reactor in Grails 3, 
um, we can do uh, many, many things. For instance, uh, we can configure the reactor framework in Gracely. Reactor has a very, well, mm, detailed configuration. Uh, you can even choose which kind of, um, let's say, handlers you want. Uh, the typical one you, you would use in a Grace application is a thread pool executor. Um, that means uh, basically we do longer and especially blocking tasks in, in these kinds of events in a Grace application. So the thread pool executor would be uh, very good and in the demo code we'll also use the thread pool executor. But you can for instance also configure non-blocking executors. So uh, where you're running in some kind of an event loop with non-blocking operations and that can also be configured uh, with Reactor. Um, the Grails 3 documentation doesn't go into a lot of detail regarding the um, configuration uh, of Reactor. Um, a good hint, take a look at the Reactor documentation and there you will see that uh, you can configure many, many, many things. In it. Uh, the next thing we can do with the Reactor in Grails is consuming and sending events. Uh, so, the basics. We send out an event, uh, we consume the event. And we can consume the event on various locations in our Grace 3 application. We can consume events uh, on a uh, controller level, where actually I must say I don't think it's a good idea to consume events on a controller level, because a controller um, is there for handling requests in my eyes and handling um, asynchronous events is something I would do on lower and other layers of the application than the controller. Because I try to have my controllers in my Grace application with a clear web focus and no asynchronous messaging, what, what not focus. But you can do it if you want. There's even events traits for services and controllers. For instance, something I use very regularly for consuming events are services. There is a trait for that, and so we have the basic building blocks already in place. Uh, there are spring annotations for Reactor. And these are uh, really very easy to use. And I would say they are, in my eyes, the preferred way of dealing with uh, the event system in Grace. We'll take a look at that. Um, and there is an event trait for other classes that aren't services or controllers. So if you just have a, a Groovy class or a Java class in source main Groovy, uh, you can even hook them up with the event system. And GORM and Spring are also firing off events. And you can react on them as well. So let's take a look at all of these things that I mentioned uh, in, in, in this slide here. So first of all, a configuration. Configuration is being done in application YML. In the YAML um, configuration, we say there is a default um, executor called MyExecutor which is a thread pool executor. We have five threads in this thread pool and we have a backlog of 2,048 um, events that can be stored until the executor stalls. So uh, uh, that means uh, we can work in parallel when working off events with five threads. And um, we can consume events with consumers and selectors. What we have here in this code is if we embed that into some kind of a Groovy or Java class, it will be the consumer. And this on is the selector. On an event of the ID my event or article published event, we do something. And these, um, this on is the uh, selector and the code inside it can be seen as some kind of, kind of a consumer. Consumers don't need payload, they don't need data. But if you transport event data through uh, the event system, you can reference the data like this. So for instance, the article publish event would transport the article uh, to your consumer and you can refer the article in your consumer. Um, services and controllers already have the event trait implemented. So don't you don't need to implement the trait yourself. That's a basic uh, stack that you do here. But one thing 
please register your consumers with the selectors in the post-construct phase after the application has, uh, the application context is up and running. The, this at post-construct is important, otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, if you want to consume uh, events from services, you need to add the at consumer annotation as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know why this is the case, but well, it is like that. I need to talk to some, somebody from the Grails team about that, and that's something I actually wanted to ask Jeff or Graham today, because I didn't grok this, but it's, it's like that. So basically, if you have a service, you need to annotate it with at consumer. Um, and the very nice thing about these selectors, we have two options on working with selectors. First of all, we can use uh, on uh, with um, article published, for instance, as the event ID, but we can also annotate a method with at selector. So at selector says, if there is an event fired called article published, Twitter service dot publish article on Twitter would go ahead and react on that event. It would pick up the event and do some stuff in there. Um, if you want to work with events in non-service or non-controller classes, you need to implement the event straight by implement events and then register the uh, consumer. Um, so basically, that is the basic infrastructure for um, consuming events. So, um, but, uh, you can react on different events. You can have your own events, which I recommend you to use. But if you create framework components, for instance, uh, you can, for instance, react on events fired from GORM. So GORM in, uh, in Grails 3 is firing off these standard events, and each of these events has its own payload. For instance, a pre-insert event, where you can do some stuff. But please, um, no Please keep in mind, um, if you um, take these GORM events here, they are asynchronous. It's not the hibernate events that you have. The hibernate events can manipulate persistence operations. These events can't because they are asynchronously, these are detached from the hibernate persistence context. And um, Spring is also um, able to fire off events. Uh, so, um, also fires events, for instance, application started, request handle, and so on. You can check out the events that Spring is going to do for you. So, so far with the theory, I think it's time to get our hands a little bit dirty and uh, see all this stuff in a little bit practice. As I said, um, there is a, um, I have a GitHub project um, on my GitHub site where you can download uh, the demo code, which is working. There's a readme that, that you can check out in order to get it up and running. And I kept uh, the complexity really low. Um, for instance, yes, I do use a email notification handler and so on, but I don't code email configuration, Twitter configuration or, and whatnot. I just do print on to the console that you just see the, the basic building blocks. So what we have here is an application called our awesome CMS. That's a Grails 3.1 application. Um, and this application just handles one, um, one entity called uh, Article. So uh, in the Grails, let's switch to Ideas Grails to Article. A very uh, simple kind of thing, headline, full text, article, URL key. Now, um, if we go ahead and uh, start, uh, ah, yeah, it's already up and running. Start this application. We can, uh, for instance, create an article, let's say headline, uh, pff, um, black Sabbath play tomorrow in Nuremberg. Looking forward to that show. Blah, 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 some uh, article, uh, some URL key, URL key, nothing really uh, specially interesting here. So we have an article list. Now, uh, we want to go ahead 
and do something after we have published the article. If you take a look at the controller in the save method, it's just the usual Grails scaffolding code uh, that we have here. So, but there are two services here. Uh, an email notification service that can notify the boss by mail of a new article and a Twitter service that can theoretically post the article on Twitter. Um, so let's hook these up in the article controller. So uh, we have a dev uh, Twitter service, for instance. Oops, one second here. Twitter service. And uh, let's do after the article has been posted. Uh, it's Twitter service uh, post article on Twitter. I don't know why the co-completion isn't working right now, but no problem. And we'll put the article in there. And what you see here is we have a tight coupling between the Twitter service and the article uh, controller. So we need a direct relationship between the both. And um, that's something we don't want to do. Let's uh, refactor this now through events. We ignore the email notification service for now. Um, but uh, we go to the Twitter service and say, hey, this Twitter service is a consumer of events. So it's a reactor spring context annotation consumer. So that's no Grails annotation here. And we want to react on an article called um, with selector. That's a spring, a uh, reactor spring context annotation. And uh, the name is our awesome CMS dot Arctic published, for instance. So we want to now have a, a, a code that is able to react on this event. So what we basically want to have is um, we, we don't want this anymore. We don't want this anymore. Oh, bad code. Tight coupling. Our central ivory tower software architect will love us for being more loosely coupled. So, um, and what we what we do is now we send a note. There's a notify function. Um, um, our awesome CMS dot Arctic published we sent the article over there so now let's take a look at the configuration um, which is in application YML I've already added some kind of a default configuration here so here it's a reactor dispatches default my executor uh, thread pool executor five threads with the backlog basically a copy paste a cheap copy paste from my slides and um, one more thing, let's take a look at the, uh, at the um, Gradle file. Um, if you take a look at the dependencies, you don't see any additional plugins or something else that, you, uh, that you're going to need. So it's just this kind, uh, it's in the core of the Grace distribution. You, there's no additional plugin needed. It's part of the core Grails distribution. Now, um, if we go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll just restart my Grace application. running um, let's go to article index and we create a new article uh, blah, blah, blah. some event I'll just add some random payload in there and we see posting the article to Twitter I just notified um, let's take another look at the code again uh, in the article controller. So there is no longer a uh, Twitter service dot 
publish some stuff to somewhere, it's just notify and so on. So the email notification would be uh, pretty easy as well. So it's add consumer and add selector. Our awesome CMS dot RT publish. I see have that. The email notification service is hooked up. And now let's do one more thing uh, to end uh, this presentation. I now go ahead and leave my awesome CMS right there, my awesome CMS project. I go out and say Grails, uh, create plugin. I, I create an external plugin. Um, let's say Facebook plugin. So usual Grails plugin, um, I go to my um, IDE, uh, import the plugin. It's the Facebook plugin right there, Grail. that in a new window so the it's Facebook and I'll now add a service to that plugin to my um, uh, Facebook plugin so Grails uh, create service so I'll say Facebook poster So service has been created, and inside that service, I make this service to a consumer. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have some service method, um, and I have a selector. And I listen to the hour or some CMS dot R chick uh, published event. Event, uh, I, I take in the object, uh, the data from the event. Um, I'll just leave the service method as stupid as it is right now. And let's say print room. Um, posting article to Facebook. To string. So. So really stupid stuff here in this plugin. Um, I um, uh, run a Grails uh, install in order to have the plugin in my um, local Maven repository. And in the meanwhile, while this is running, I'll add it as a plugin, as a dependency to um, our project here, compile. Uh, Facebook plugin, Facebook plugin dot zero dot one. I think that should be the. Hmm? Facebook plugin. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very good. So it's been published to Maven local. Now going back to our awesome. CMS and running Grails run app. I've now just added the plugin. I didn't do anything else in the article controller or somewhere else. I just added the plugin that is listening to the event in Grails. Um, oops. Ah. I love good error messages. Thank you very much. I always get that wrong. Give it another try.
the application is up and running. Let's go to the article list, which should be empty. So and create a new new plugin um, with some random crap text. Posting article to Twitter. That's our Twitter service in the Craze application. Notify boss by mail of new article. That's the email notification service in our application and posting article on Facebook. That's now the article from the plugin. And all we had to add was the dependency to the plugin and the plugin is reacting asynchronously on these events. So the only kind of coupling that we have is not in the code. It's just uh, in the build path here. And uh, I think that is really cool. Uh, you can't do that with promises, for instance, because with the promises, with the other async features, you have to have uh, them c in the code. And uh, that's, that's a very, very nice feature. So basically, um, to conclude, I think this is a, a total killer feature in Grails 3, the event system. I actually, after I migrated uh, some of my applications to Grails 3, I immediately, I immediately started uh, refactoring some of the async logic that I have to the event system. And I had a, a, a very low, uh, I, I received a, a lower degree of coupling in the code. So there's the first hand rising, which means we are now shifting over to the question part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's detached. Hmm? You would have to reattach it. Yes. Basically, um, what I have in my code here is a very, well, simplified example because it's just 50 minutes time. Uh, what I usually do, I don't pass around domain objects. I usually create uh, transfer objects for the events. So there are event domain objects and these are detached. It's asynchronous, they have left the hibernate session or the entity manager, whichever you prefer, and detached. So if you want to do persistence operations on them, you would have to reattach them. But I don't think that it is a good idea to do any writing persistence operations on them because you might have, you might run into race conditions. You don't know who's going to be first because we fire off the event and then the controller is still doing some logic and you might run into trouble here. And I think um, the events are um, mainly a good fit for um, mm, non-core business operations that react on core business operations and they shouldn't manipulate the data. Yes, or do you have an add-on to what I said? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to reattach it. You need to reattach it. Yes. Well, basically, reactor is mainly the event processing. Um, it's. Um, there is no no difference. I think uh, basically these events are now also being routed through the reactor system, and that's it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I've never tried that, but you can hook up controllers as consumers. I've never tried this web circuit kind of thing, but well, reflecting on my experience, I would consider it to be possible. Okay, yes, uh, first you, then you. Okay. 
Um, I think that is a very good question for the Ask the Grails experts panel in the afternoon because I, d I have no clue about uh, the, uh, the roadmap they have. And maybe that's a good idea uh, to do that. Um, to be honest, I, I can't answer your question because I'm not part of the Grails team. I don't know the exact roadmap on that. But um, I think Reactor in its core is mainly focused on JVM internal stuff. It's not meant for external messaging. What you can, however, do is hook up a consumer and do the consumer, uh, let the consumer do the external pushing to Revit or ActiveMQ or whatnot. Yes, you, you had on it? Ah, okay, okay, yes? Tough question, to be honest, um, because um, basically this event system is meant to go away from orchestration to reaction. So you basically don't have an orchestration on these. What you could, however, do is that you publish to Twitter, and after the publishing to Twitter has been successful, you fire off an article has been published to Twitter event and react on this one. Okay, to conclude that, um, there is the link uh, to the code. I will also publish that on Twitter, at uh, Bitboss is my handle, and I'll also um, tweet the link to the slides this afternoon. And maybe you want to join me uh, in the afternoon. I'll also do another talk with live coding and slides uh, on how to migrate from Grails 2 to Grails 3.1. So if you're interested, I'd be happy to see you again. Thank you very much.